Alright guys, uh, I'm Lark Will and uh, I came across a video content from an uh, interview that the Golden Feather podcast and YouTube content creation uh, duo of uh, Chibi Bree and Vertech um, did a couple years back with Steven. And I thought I would share that with you guys and um, mainly one quote towards the end of their video. And I'll link their video so you guys can watch that and see their content. They're fantastic. And I'll definitely turn you guys over to them for really um, a good kind of long form um, content creator duo uh, with really good vibes. They're amazing, as are most of the other, if not all of the other content creators that I've come across um, that are covering Ashes of Creation currently. So um, the question that they asked had to do with Ashes of Creation's class list and the primary and secondary archetypes, how they would balance out, how they would uh, stand on their own, would they be unique? And I'll play that video for you guys here in a second, and um, I hope you guys enjoy. And I have time for one more question. One more, huh? All right. Make it a good one. A really, really good <laughs> one. It's a really good one then, because I was kind of curious about this myself, and it was brought up. Uh, it was brought up by by someone in our guild here. So, how different will subclasses actually be from each other? Say the difference between a high sword, which is a fighter cleric, from a spell sword, which is fighter mage. Will they be just different flavors with just super minor differences or will they be different classes altogether? And the same question applies for like the twin classes, like a high sword, which is fighter cleric and then Templar, which is cleric fighter. Mm -hmm. So they should feel, uh, they should feel very different. Um, really it comes down to your archetype provides a primary role, um, that you can customize and you can, you know, uh, move in one of the different role directions a little bit based on how you build out the uh, character class um, skill tree. Uh, and then the subclass system, the secondary class system, that provides augments which radicalize the taste, feel, and, and, and um, uh, role components of, of your primary archetype. Um, either moving it further in a different role's uh, direction, or doubling down on you know the the um, established role of the of the archetype specifically. Um, so, I guess short answer is they're intended to radically change the look, feel, and uh, role capabilities that your class traditionally would uh, provide. All right. Um... Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Um, now that you guys have watched that video, um, short clip with Steven and the question that was asked by Vertech, uh, what are you guys' thoughts? Do you think that the classes and the archetypes are going to be uh, very unique and stand out as their own? Will the 64 unique class types um, earn their specific unique names or will they just be blends of the primary archetype and uh, indistinguishable? in significant ways from their counterparts for the secondary um, archetype options that they might have. So if you're a fighter primary and your secondary uh, class uh, choice or archetype choice would be um, tank, that equals a dreadnought. Will a dreadnought feel different than a fighter or ranger, which is a hunter? If they don't, and the only difference is like the hunter can, especially since you can pull mobs with any weapon in this game, there's not uh, class locks on weapons, um, that if there was class like on weapons, the ranger's secondary choice might be a way for a tank to pull mobs in a dungeon. But since there's no class like on weapons, um, it'll be interesting to see what distinguishes these um, unique classes and the secondary archetypes, how it's going to impact these. And I have hope from watching this video, I think it sounds pretty amazing. Um, I think the amount of theory crafting that's going to go on during the alpha after the uh, A1 uh, release in the end. Um, the verbal and visual uh, NDA drop and everyone's in there um, experiencing all those different classes that are um, the early backers, especially going into the Alpha 2 and betas. Uh, we're going to be getting um, just at a landslide of content from the early testers and it's going to be pretty fun seeing all the different things that come out of that specifically related to the class list, the archetypes. Um, are they distinguishable? Uh, do they stand apart? Do they earn their name? Is a Shadow Guardian, a rogue tank, um, a much more unique feeling class than a rogue mage, which is a night spell? If it is, which I'm hoping it is, uh, based upon Steven's word, when he says radical, diff uh, radically different play styles, um, he doesn't say play styles, but that's what I'm inferring. I'm hoping that it's gonna be um, a really, um, 
like an adventure just choosing your class and there's going to be a lot of different choices and paths to um, create unique combinations that are maybe not unique to you but very few other players are, are doing that you encounter with uh, when on your um, travels throughout the game and I think that could be an awesome thing that the game could uh, do to stand apart and also um, do for kind of that lateral progression that horizontal progression that um, many you hear many people talking about once you hit level cap um, that horizontal progression, especially since it sounds like you can reset your secondary class um, some way, somehow by going into a node city, maybe it's a metropolis, not sure yet, and resetting your secondary uh, archetype and then kind of playing around with that. That could be a ton of fun, building out your skill trees, trying different combinations, um, and especially if they stand out from one another. Uh, maybe depending on the mode of content you're running, you might want to be um, have one skill base and completely changing all your skill trees. While that could be tedious to a certain extent, being able to have that customization is really going to give legs to the game and make it stand out and um, be something that a lot of theory crafters and people that like those elements of the game are really going to be able to sink their teeth into and enjoy. So um, from that video and the, um, the way that Steven made it sound, I think it's going to be a little different than what I've heard many other people um, stating. I'm wondering what your thoughts. Uh, when I first started uh, paying attention to Ashes of Creation, when I was looking at this class list um, table, um, people informed me that the way I should view it is just look at it as the primary archetype, first initial of the class or the archetype you're going to choose. So say I wanted to be a ranger. So I'm a primary archetype R. And then you're on secondary. Say I went ranger, ranger, I would be an RR. If I want fighter a tank, I would be um, an FT, a mage, summoner, an MS. And since there's no shared um, letters from the primary and, um, trees, or list or other, um, you could do that. And they were saying that's an easier way than memorizing 64 unique uh, names for classes that may not be, maybe indistinguishable from one another um, along the, the secondary trees. So I'm hoping that they, that's actually not correct. Uh, while I think a lot of for shorthand, a lot of people will still use that. It's very functional and efficient. I'm hoping that they stand out so much that they force us to learn, hey, I'm a mage tank, you, you should call me a spellstone. I'm not an MT, I'm a spellstone. And whether or not you, you agree with the name or not is a different thing. I'm just, what I'm getting at is I hope that they actually stand out so much different than say a mage bard, a sorcerer, that um, people actually learn or want to call them by their specific name. It's not just a placeholder that has no meaning once the game launches. So that's my hope. Whether or not they hit that in the alpha and the betas, my hope is when the game launches that they're hitting those strides. And um, Steven seems to have that aspiration for what they're going for. And they're they're redoing combat right now anyways. Um, but I have high hopes for it. I'm curious what you guys think. Is that what... Uh, which direction do you guys see the class list and archetypes going? I know a lot, I'm not going to get into theory crafting what the abilities could be of each class. That's not the purpose of this video. A lot of other folks have already dove into that, and you guys can read the table for yourself. You don't need me to read the whole thing. But um, my main question, the reason for this video is um, asking that kind of thesis or theory is, is are they going to be standing out or are they just all going to be a blend? And um, it's unimportant because if it's unimportant it's going to be kind of like that wah wah uh, moment where your choices don't feel like they have any impact but between your you're having choices between what abilities you're going to be taking and have having limited choices between uh, your primary skill tree of the archetype so say you're a tank and you have to choose certain abilities over others on your primary skill tree that's going to be a way you um, start to customize um, your class and then once you do the secondary it sounds like you're going to be selecting other ones as well and you can't take them all so you're going to have different um playing classes even within the same name so maybe shadow guardians play differently than one another i'm kind of curious how that is like if there's like widely different specific 64 classes among themselves so like is a scout much different than other scouts based on how their skill tree is maybe one's more into traps and another one's more into uh, DPS. It's going to be really interesting to see how that is. And again, not not trying to get into theory crafting of what their abilities are, but um, I'm hoping that there are, are is like a widely different um, ability in class trees and secondary options. And it sounds like there is between religion, the different kind of um, guilds that there are in the game. I don't mean player guilds, but like the different guilds of um, uh, augmentation that we're going to be diving into. Um, I think this is one of the biggest, not only theory crafting, 
but once the alpha start launching guys uh, i'm in alpha 2 but this is going to come out long before i am able to participate in the game but the players in the alpha one especially all the content creators are going to be generating things expect a large amount like a del it's going to be like a deluge of theory crafting and information that's going to hit the um the internet as soon as the alpha one launches and um, as they start rolling out all the classes for them to experiment with, um, it's going to be a lot of fun seeing what comes out of that um, trial and testing period. And it's not just for the classes, you know, it's for the testing of the systems and those kind of things. But um, a lot of the content creators are just chomping at the bit and they, um, they're going to be sharing some information with us about um, how this plays out, at least to the extent that they have. I don't know what their level cap is going to be, so maybe they're not even at the level cap um, needed to choose a secondary tree during the alphas. Hopefully they are, towards the end of it at least, um, but maybe they're not, and maybe that's an alpha 2 or beta. But um, yeah, curious what you guys think are uh, about the that question again. Will they stand out, or will they all be blend and indistinguishable? Um, I'm hoping for the best, and I actually think that um, it looks like it's going to be uh, a lot of fun to dive into this, and uh, that's the end of the video. See you guys.